वेलकम बैक वी वर डिस्कसिंग द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन सिंगल फेस इंडक्शन मोटर एंड वी हैव कवर्ड द टू पार्ट्स इन ट्यूटोरियल नंबर 22 एंड 23 इन 22 वी हैव कवर्ड द फंडामेंटल्स वेयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डबल रिवॉल्विंग फील्ड थ्योरी एंड हाउ दिस मेन वाइंडिंग एंड दउजरी वाइंडिंग प्ले एज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन सिंगल फेस इंडक्शन मोटर इन determining the impedance torque and the power tutorial 23 we have discussed about the equivalent circuit where we have discussed how the equivalent circuit is used to estimate the different parameters such as the current impedance voltage torque and power and so and so forth now in this tutorial 24 we will see how the parameters of the equivalent circuit are estimated using two important test one is known as the no load test and another one is known as the block rotor test regarding the theory part of these two test we have discussed in detail in the lecture class now we will see the problems related to the no load test and the block rotor test problem 1 where a single phase induction motor the rating given is 220 volt and the two test that is conducted on the induction motor block rotor and the no load test so these uh, readings are given the voltmeter reading the ammeter reading and the wattmeter reading for the two test the readings will be used to estimate the equivalent circuit parameters so we have to determine the equivalent circuit parameters it is also given that the stator winding resistance is 1.5 ohms so we have been given the resistance which is r and since we are using the nomenclature 1 for the stator and 2 for the rotor so r1 is given as 1.5 ohms and uh, we have to find the friction and the windage losses also apart from the other parameters of the equivalent circuit so let us see the solution first we will go with the block rotor test block rotor test the given voltage current and power meter readings are noted and we can determine the impedance first which is the ratio of the short circuit voltage by the short circuit current so the voltage given is 120 volt and the current given is 9.6 ampere so it suggests that 12.5 ohms will be the impedance we can calculate the resistance from the formula power divided by the square of the current so the power is given as 460 watt and the current is 9.6 ampere so the resistance part is 4.99 ohms now we know that the impedance is given by r plus jx where r is the resistance and x is the reactance z is the impedance so it means that the reactance part we can estimate from the magnitude formula as square root of tan e square which is the impedance square minus the resistance square these values we have already calculated we can substitute in the equation and find the reactance which is 11.46 ohms the stator part of the reactance is equal to the rotor reactance referred to the stator side which is denoted by this prime so it means the rotor parameters are referred to the stator side and it is half of the total value of the reactance that we have estimated so it is 11.46 ohms so if we take the half of that we get 5.73 ohms now it is given that the resistance of the stator winding is 1.5 ohms so the total resistance is given by the stator resistance plus the rotor resistance referred to the stator side so the prime indicates the rotor parameters referred to the stator side we can use this equation with the given information of the resistance of the stator to find the rotor resistance referred to the stator side as re minus r1m substituting this values we will get 3.49 ohms as the rotor resistance referred to the stator side now moving forward using the no load test where we have the open circuit voltage open circuit current and the open circuit power 
readings we can obtain the no load power factor first so cos phi value we can obtain as the power divided by the product of voltage into current so substituting the values of power voltage and current we get 0.1235 as the value of the power factor given by cos phi naught from here we can find what is the value of phi naught as the cos inverse of the power factor value so power factor we get 0.1235 and this phi naught we can put it in the equation of sine component so sine phi naught is 0.9923 the no load impedance z naught is given by the voltage by current so the voltage is 220 volt and the current is 4.6 ampere so we get the impedance as 47.83 ohms the reactance x naught can be obtained as z naught sine phi naught so z naught is the impedance value which is 47.83 we calculated and sine phi naught also we have calculated as 0 0.9923 we can put it and get the value of the reactance as 47.46 ohms the cold friction and the windage losses can be calculated from the knowledge of the power input to the motor at no load condition and the no load copper losses so if we uh, take out the copper losses from the power input we will be getting the total loss due to the core which is iron loss the friction and the windage losses so p naught is the power input to the motor and the copper loss is given by the formula i square uh, into the total resistance so we have the resistance of the stator r1m and the resistance of the rotor which is referred to the stator side by 4 so if we substitute the values of the value of p naught that is 125 watt the current is 4.6 amps and the resistance of the stator is 1.5 and the resistance of the rotor referred to the stator side is 3.49 so that gives 74.8 watt as the total losses due to core friction and the windage losses next problem problem number two where again we have the single phase induction motor this is split phase type and the voltage is 115 volt rating 60 hertz machine the voltage current and the power meter readings under the condition of block rotor and the no load test with auxiliary winding open and the main winding open we are doing the two tests one is no load test and the block rotor test and for the main winding we are doing only the block rotor test so these readings are obtained using the ammeter volt meter and watt meter for the two tests it is also given that the main winding resistance is 2.5 ohms and the auxiliary winding resistance is 100 ohms. We have to determine the equivalent circuit parameters of the single phase index and motor. So the solution goes like this where we will be using the first the block rotor test on the main winding with the auxiliary winding open. So first we determine the impedance. Impedance is nothing but voltage by current. So we use the readings that we noted 25 by 3.72 that gives us the impedance resistance is nothing but the power divided by the square of the current so if we put the value we get 6.23 ohms the reactance again we can obtain as under root of the impedance square minus the resistance square so that gives 2.52 ohms the reactance of the stator and the rotor are equal which is half of the total value that is 2.52 ohms of the reactance so it gives 1.26 ohms. Similarly, the resistance of the rotor we can calculate as the total resistance that we have obtained 6.23 minus the resistance of the stator side. So it is 3.73 ohms. Next test that we do is the no load test. So again, the no load test we will determine the impedance as the voltage by current. The resistance we can determine as power divided by the square of the current. The reactance we can determine as the square root of impedance square minus the resistance square so these values we can calculate from the basic equations of impedance resistance and the reactance from the known meter readings that is uh, noted now we can obtain the reactance xm which is the magnetizing reactance as twice the values of the no load value of the leakage reactance minus the drop due to which uh, you have 0 0.75 into 2.52 that is the drop we have so it keeps 69.17 ohms 
and the total power we can also obtain as from the meter readings where we have the power reading 55.17 minus the total losses that you have on the copper side so that is equal to 20 watt so this is the power which we obtain from the block rotor test we can obtain the impedance resistance uh, similar to the previous uh, equations and uh, we get these values the resistance of the rotor so two indicates the rotor and this is the auxiliary winding which we get from the resistance of the auxiliary winding total resistance minus the value that we got it 100 ohms earlier so it gives to be 0 0.94 now the turns ratio we can obtain so a is the turns ratio which is square root of the resistance of the auxiliary winding which we have obtained here r2a divided by the resistance of the rotor r2 these values also we have obtained 3.73 and 0 0.94 if we take the square root then we find that the turns ratio is 0 0.5 so uh, we obtain the parameters using the test ratings now the problem number three which is uh, quite simple uh, only we have to use know like which reading we have to use and which reading we, no we have to neglect so this problem let us see uh, you have a test readings of 230 volt 50 hertz 4 pole a uh, single phase induction motor and the readings uh, is given under the condition that the auxiliary winding is open where the no load test and the block rotor test all readings of voltmeter and meter and watt meter are given the main winding resistance now main winding means the stator so it is 2.5 ohms and determine the rotor resistance referred to the stator so what is the rotor resistance r2 which is referred to the stator so we have the prime sign r2 dash so let us see the solution so we have to use the impedance under the block rotor condition where the impedance is the ratio of the voltage by current so we can put the value of the voltage and the current meter readings we get the impedance 8.87 ohms and the resistance we can obtain as the power divided by the square of the current so that gives 5.78 ohms this is the resistance and this is the impedance so the rotor resistance referred to the stator side is again the total resistance minus the stator resistance you will get the rotor resistance uh, referred to the stator side so this uh, problem is quite simple and we can obtain what is the resistance of the rotor which is referred to the stator side so this three part of single phase induction motor tutorial where we discussed on the fundamentals equivalent circuit and the testing cover the entire portion of single phase induction motor thank you for now see you in the next tutorial